And welcome, we're back with coverage here of the Tencent LPL Summer. It's week three, day one here. We're up to our third game of the night here. It's ID up against LMQ, as we've seen some great matches already. My name is Patriot Term. I'm going to be joined by Papa Smithy. Papa, we've seen OMG vs EP. We've seen Positive Energy vs Royal. Now, I guess almost like our first match up there, an established team versus one of the newer teams here for the LPL Summer. Absolutely, and although both these teams in most ways were represented in the first season, I mean, LMQTC is actually a combination of Live More, which uh, came sixth in the first in the you know the spring split, and uh, the Royal Club's second team actually they came together and joined forces and sponsor I believe, and Invictus Gaming. I mean, they were leading the pack uh, by the end of the league stage of the spring split, didn't get it together and actually lost to Positive Energy in the first semi final there. I mean, they're four and two here in the uh, summer split. You know, they're in that pack of teams that had that four and two coming into today's play. They're going to want to, you know, put LMQ to the sword here and, uh, you know, join Positive Energy on five and two. Yeah, and the draft already looking quite interesting between these two teams. Nunu, Vayne, and Oriana, the bands out there from Victus Gaming. There's LMQ have gone with Zach, Elise, and Zed. The pick series, first pick, Rise, comes out from IG. The Thresh, Jarvan, is the answer there from LMQ. And we see Twisted Fate actually get through for the third pick here, as well as Twitch getting picked up there for IG as well. So already it seems like IG, I mean, I don't know how good Rise is or how much I've been playing it, but... If they picked it first, they probably wanted it, and it seems like they've got a lot of picks they get going. And Twist of Fate, really? This guy's not supposed to be allowed to be picked, right? And absolutely. And if you look here, I mean, they're being very transparent about where their picks are going. Here. We've got three picks, and we already know it's going to be a Rise Top, a Twist of Fate Mid, and a Twitch AD Carry, barring some real shenanigans. And maybe I speak too soon, given that we've already seen two Pantheons today. But Invictus Gaming seem to know the comp they're going for here, and are just picking really, really quickly. They are, and it looks like LMQ deciding on their picks as well. They've got Tristana and Lissandra, actually, as their third and fourth pick there. So, pretty happy there with that one. Tristana, not someone we see too often, actually. So, curious to see her being picked up by LMQ. And looks like we're going to round things out here with Jungle Plus support. Now we're going to come in there. A great support for a hyper carry like Twitch. And it looks like the, uh, I mean, the World Elite standard of, of old, Nocturne plus Twisted Fate could be the combo here. Absolutely, and I had to adjust my monitor a second there. I did confirm with that camera that PDD is here, so it is Invictus Gaming we're seeing. But you're right, a lot of World Elite traits to this Nocturne TF combo. When we didn't know much about World Elite, when they hadn't been seen much on the world scene, that was kind of the flashing for everyone here. They knew they loved their globals, and knew they loved to combo those two champions. So the threat's still there, Pacer Time, all the nerfs later. Yeah, it's been picked in there as well. So IG's lineup complete and very much on the table, as you pointed out. Very transparent picks here for IG. So LMQ know what they're up against. They've got the uh, benefit of last pick here as well. And looks like they might be going for Cassidy here, interestingly enough. And I mean, Cassidy actually mentioned it in the last game, Royals Whites has actually been playing quite a bit of Cassidy. It seems like kind of bringing that one back. And Cassidy, a fantastic champion. Oh my goodness, that's a win rate. If you see the stats pop up there on screen, apparently 100% winning. And Kasten's one of those champions that's really coming back into favor. I mean, we it's well known that he has a very favorable laning phase against Twisted Fate, just because after 6, TF has almost no answer to the chain, um, rift walk, silences, and slows. But it's not usually sin and competitive, even though it's a well-known counterpick, just because Kasten suffers in a 1v2 situation. He really, really struggles in that situation. You'd never really seem to get in a competitive play that heads up matchup against a TF. So it'll be interesting to see how these lanes actually line up for Invictus Gaming. Well, as you suggested, you have to expect that IG are going to be swapping things around. I mean, in uh, game two here of today's play, we saw so many lane swaps. We've seen Positive Energy and Royal, so potentially could see a lot of shenanigans in there as well. But you know that uh, LMQ's mid player there really, really wants to make sure he gets out of the way of uh, anyone but just one champion and tries to kind of, you know, lane nice and safely if he can. And I mean, Kassarin, once he gets going, it's very, very scary. I mean, he's highly mobile. He's got great damage. He's a good late game champion here. And I think Paul Rise is going to meet a few too many friends here. PDD actually in a bit of trouble. Rocket Jump coming through the flash hook looking there as well but Thresh does not nail that one down a few summoners burnt there on either side there it looks like flashes down for both Thresh and Rise there but Peter is actually down the bottom lane already which does tip the hand a little here for IG absolutely it does tip the hand I mean what's he started he, is a, he actually started the the fairy charm as well I and mean, we almost always see the 21 utility uh, mana crystal start come out from Rise just because it helps his trading so much Going a fairy charm and award screams that he's going for that 
uh, 1v2 laning space. Yeah, and they know that IG is probably going to try and swap towards mid. Interestingly enough, Kasten looks like he's still hanging out, hanging out towards the middle there. Now I'm going to rotate around to try and uh, actually meet up with Lissandra there, but I think just wants to get some ward and vision down. And I have never heard the Chinese voice of Tristana, but it's very interesting. I'm sure, every, I'm sure that came through. It for sounded everyone. very rhythmical, though. It sounded like there was some singing. I don't remember any long songs coming out of Tristana, right. but hey, what do I know? We'll have to get that one translated. It seems pretty sweet here. Looks like jungles have started their bus well and truly at this point. And everybody's hanging out here. So Kid is going to be in the middle here with Shasha up against that Cassidy. And so that's bad news there in the mid lane. Peter has actually made himself towards the top lane right now. As he last hits a minion. So uh, Lissandra, I guess, you know, it's funny. At one point in time, we'd say this was unusual, but at this point, especially with these two champions, this is very, very normal up in the top lane. Yeah, I mean, Katie Rolster, Arrows, um, Mac Moon has been playing a bit of this. I mean, a lot of people, and so has also, a lot of people in the EU L LCS experimenting with this Lissandra top, just because with that passive, uh, you know, she doesn't have the mana concerns you might expect from an AP um, you know, champion with that mana resource up top. And she does control the wave quite well, you know, with that Q ability, she is able to spam it out on a fairly low cooldown and control the wave, can push. And then, I mean, the the thing that kind of solidifies her as a really strong pick and competitive, an AP champion that can initiate is really, really strong. And of course, Lissandra has that ability to initiate on an enemy or just to go on targetable and do that AOE slow. So a very, very strong pick. People haven't really, you know, found out the the min-max build for Lissandra, or the min-max playstyle, but it's coming. Yeah, and see PDD there up in the top lane, just a massive chunk of damage out of Dreams. And so Lissandra, you know, definitely can farm at range here with that Q, but taking a beating right now from PDD, and that's, you know, without that mana crystal there from Ryze, that's with the Fairy Charm, so things will not get better as Ryze gets items. That's kind of how it goes with Ryze. He's very, very good once he gets going. Very, very powerful. Not only AoE with the team fight, but of course 1v1 in there as well. Jarvan actually spending a lot of time in the blue side jungle, interestingly enough. I think he's been looking for a, looking for a kill down the bottom lane, really trying to get casted in ahead. But I have to say, of all the things here that come in, so we are going to see the dives at time with a very nice flash there. Unfortunately, does not draw the turret aggro onto no name, so that stun card slightly wasted there for that one, but does protect him from the rest of the dive. I have to say, the LMQ, I think they're happy with the way their lanes played out. They kind of did, uh, kind of played out the way they wanted them to, I think. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be happy. I mean, a long lane Cassidy is a very gankable target. You know, a melee champion is overextending, and a long lane is a risky proposition for Cassidy. But, I mean, Nocturne's pre-six ganks, pretty weak. You know, he doesn't have that ability to gap close. He does have the speed up from his Q, but nothing to be feared necessarily. And they'll take this LMQ. Yeah, they're actually cute as well. I actually saw Thresh go into the jungle and help Jarvan clean out the red buff as well. So there was a little bit of buddy counter jungling going on there as well. And in general, nerdem has been quite active here around the map. I think he's going to look towards maybe mid. No, thinks better of it. Really wants the bottom lane if he can get there. I mean, as you mentioned, Cassidy at level 6, just a completely different champion. His kit really revolves around that ultimate. And if, you know, Jarvan can get a kill and get Cassidy some extra, extra experience, that's going to be good news there. But I think bottom lane, it looks like Jarvan just going to have to get out of the way there towards the bottom. And there we are as a dive comes through there's the tie looking for the stun card in fact there's first blood there's a missed dive there from Jarvan comes through kid very low in there as well Avenger trying to get the kill there will pick it up there on Tristana now Shasha on top of the great rocket jump reset there comes through and that's bad news there for Nami but heals himself up there with ebb and flow little bit of damage around the traders on Cassidy now low in there as well he gets speed up towards there's the tie with the card ready to go he's looking for the dive he finds the wild cards but not quite enough damage there and Illusion just gets out from under that turret without dying so much aggression coming out there. No Name just trying a bit too hard to bully around that Twisted Fate. Even in that favorable matchup, still trying to get that Cassidy in the head and pay for it with his life. Yep, just that one kill would boost the experience up where I think Cassidy would feel completely safe in his 1v1. But right now, probably doesn't feel too happy about what's going on. Level 5 for both those uh, laners there down the bottom lane. Looks like Rise up the top as well. Just farming away here in Lissandra. You know, Dream's found a little more ground now. Has, uh, looks like going back now to spend some money as well. I imagine Rise wants to do the same. But one of the nice things I do like here is when Dream's isn't trading with Rise, Peter D really has trouble clearing out the waves, especially early on. And as I said before, she does have that wave clear. So pushing in on a Rise, it doesn't have a blue buff. It doesn't even have tier to keep that max mana up. A good way to control Ryze in the early game because he has to choose between CSing and trying to trade. And the trade, you know, when he can afford to do it just like there, very strong. He did he thankfully finding the balance quite nicely. There's actually slightly ahead on CS and of course went uh, pretty hand there, activating his ultimate, just trying to do the damage in there to Dream. So maybe going to push us back a little. Lissandra going to come back to lane though. Double Doran's Blade 
boots in there as well, and that fairy charm, of course. So good news there. Looks like Jarvan through the mid hit kid tries to get out of the knockout, but he can't quite get it done. The flay back in there as well. Ambush is just quite enough. He's invisible, but they still managed to find the kill there. And I don't quite know how they saw him. I thought he faded out, but I guess it wasn't quite enough there for Twitch. And that's going to be a nice kill there for Avenger. He's down the bottom lane. It's a tie. Going to stun up that Cassidy, but he reforks out of the way. I mean, Cassidy at this point, he really is at a point where he can start taking over this lane. Absolutely. I mean, he's getting access to that Rift Walk. He's able to, even in a long lane, I mean, if Twist Fate ever overextends, he's going to pay for all yeah. his life. And you can see Twist Fate is a bit overextended there. Knocked up by Jarvan in there as well. The Rift Walk coming in to start things off, and there's going to be the kill for Kasten as he Rift Walks on top of Twist Fate. So nice pressure there from No Name. I think it's a tie there. A little confident, maybe, or overconfident, I should say, in the bottom, you know, thinking, hey, you know, I got a gank, I'm doing well. But, uh, you know, overextends a little. No Name still there with the pressure. Comes back through and is able to give that kill off to Kassadin. And that's... Kassadin snowballing is a very, very scary thing. You know, if he gets farm, he's scary enough. If he starts snowballing through the mid game, it is absolutely terrifying. And this is the point where Twisted Fate is not interested in going into a long lane with Kassadin. He is not interested at all in being down bottom in a 1v1 against Kassadin. So I, he'll, he'll rotate mid here. If he's forced to, he'll take the 1v1 in mid lane just because there's less... There's space for him to be able to overextend, you know, and get caught and chased down by those rift walks. But, you know, it's almost a loss minimization thing as a Twisted Fate player against Kasten at this point. Yeah, and that's, I think, a lot of what Satan needs to start doing here. The CS creeping up towards there as well for Kasten. Looks like oh, Kid and Chash are going to rotate it down. They recognize they need to give Satan the space. They're going to do just that here. Looks like PDD's returned to lane. He's got Ruby Crystal plus Tear of the Goddess and Blue Buff now as well. So he's pretty happy. And there's Wildcards is coming out as well. So as you said, not the greatest situation there for Twisted Fate, but they'll take it. And look, they, they've given the blue buff to PDD up the top here just to try and be able to control the wave a bit better up top. That's just another resource being kept away from Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate will get there eventually. You know, Zetai is obviously going to farm well, do his best to come through here, but they're not putting their eggs in the early game snowball from Twisted Fate basket at all here uh, in Victus Gaming. No, and as we have just the lane swapped around, kind of the standard lanes we have here, we've got four down the bottom, still up in the top, and they've been drilling for quite a while, who Dream's trying to get out of the way, but cannot E away there, while still snared by that room prison, so Dream's here, not having too much fun, it seems like, against Ryze, slightly behind in CS, and seems to be getting the worst end of all the trades here, and Ryze, as we said, a very, very good duelist here, I mean, the Sandra's got plenty of tricks that she can pull out here, but looks like gonna try and rotate for a gank here mid, potentially. Which would be quite the setup here, but Zatai, I think he knows what's going on. Illusion setting up here as well. He's got level 6 now on that Nocturne. And no names here as well, so we're going to have Carnage there. Bad news for Thresh as he comes in. Illusion looking to do the Dark Tidal Wave in there as well. Kid there unleashing the damage, but a good Cataclysm and a Rocket Jump in there as well. Avenger's going to clean up that kill there, and there's a Rocket Jump reset in there as well. Kid's going to get slowed down this time. Picks up Thresh for his troubles, but maybe not enough. No name forced to flash show and Shash are low here. Flashes forward there, wants the kill, picks it up with Ebb and Flow, but I think that's going to give Avenger the last life here, and indeed it will act prison not enough the triple kill coming out for Tristana and, you know we weren't quite talking about it before focusing on top and mid mainly but that is really bad news that Tristana just got the triple and this is actually the second match day in a row it's in just an absolutely massive Tristana the same thing happened for Sun um, in the previous round just was a 9-0 on Tristana about the 15 minute mark so even though Tristana's that late game hyper carry, when you're 5-0 as a Tristana, you're feeling pretty good about the game. Yeah, and that was always one of the things with Trist is that, you know, traditionally, until recently, actually, you know, they retooled her a little bit, Blade of the Ruin King became an item, which kind of smoothed things out a little bit. Trist's issue was always great early game, great late game, and it gets real wonky in the middle real fast. If you're snowballing as Avenger, you're very, very happy in this situation. And, I mean, Tristana 5-0 is scary. Any AD carry, if you start snowballing, can be very deadly. And Tristana especially is very, very, very deadly. I mean, and you see how good those rocket jump resets were in those fights. And every time a situation gets bad, it goes really, really bad when those resets come out. And we've got almost a Blade of the Ruin King bot straight up there for Trist. Yeah, and Trist at 5-0, Cassidy, you know, ahead in CS against Twisted Fate, 1-0 up. Apart from the Ryze kind of having a favorable lane against Lissandra, the scaling in terms of the carries is really with LMQ at this point. Yeah, and they're doing well down the bottom line. They will return there. And looks like Nerd, I'm going to clear things out. Maybe for Dragon here. He continues to show presence towards the bottom side of the map. Zatai, I think a smart choice here in mid. is going to actually get himself, get himself an Abyssal Scepter as he picks up a Negatron Click here in mid. I mean, the Negatron Click isn't really an option. I mean, finishing the Abyssal is kind of optional, given that with the 600 range of Abyssal, you don't really get the full purchase of the you know, 1050 gold combined cost. But 
the Negatron cloak. He needs it to just not, you know, be perilously harassed under his turret. And looks like Cassian going to rotate now towards the mid lane. That could be bad news here for Javani. Cataclysm's in. The tidal wave comes through. Hits most of them, which is nice here. And Spray and Praise coming in as well. So Ty comes in with Destiny. And that's a kill there for Kid as he picks up Javan. Still looking to do the damage. Spray and Praise still going there. Navi, no, not quite enough. Ty Cooler's Blessing. As Spray and Praise range actually comes off there. And LMQ can actually tank this turret and take it out. Very nice play there. As Thresh flashes out in there as well. But no real follow-up, unfortunately. No one there for a follow-up stun. Illusion doesn't have his ultimate. Zatai, I don't think had his flash. No, he does not. So not able to get in there with a the gold card. And an awkward time for Spray and Prey to run out there. That would have been a perfect time to get another slow at very, very massive 850 range for Twitch. And kind of the turret was almost a, a lucky coincidence there, as of course the top turret falls in response. So a trade of turrets, but just a one kill advantage going to Invictus Gaming there. Yeah, and Blade of the Ruin King picked up there for Avenger. I mean, IG, that's the kind of thing they need to be doing if they want to keep themselves in this game and in all fairness we're actually ahead at this point so despite the 5-0 tryst all that money that's gone over to Avenger you know it's spread reasonably evenly across the IG side and they do have a slight advantage here although at this point as we approach the 13 minute mark it's 4-6 uh, to six in kills so LMQ obviously ahead there but uh, the objectives that IG managed to push out have actually got about a about thousand gold ahead Although it's pretty and a twist of fate passive, of course, yes. helping out immediately there as well. Kid there forced to insta flash down the bottom lane, but he's going to be able to get out of trouble, so he'll be happy with that one. Certainly, you know, we always talk about Blade of the Ruin King as being a good item for self peeling and also aggression, and Tristana, especially a champion that can use it for aggression, looks like knocks down up the top there, going for the ultimate there. So much damage coming on to Dreams and Illusion. Going to try and play clean up a good ult there, but that's going to set up the Q. I think, no, not enough there for Illusion, but he flashes forward for the last auto attack and picks up that Lissandra, but a good response here from LMQ. They're going to pick themselves up dragon yeah one kill for a dragon lmq will take it and despite coming in to this game two and four so they haven't really they're, they're, they're pretty much they're still in sixth spot in the uh in the lpl here you know they're they're stronger than some of the new entrants but still struggling a bit lmq they're looking good against the highly fancied ig yeah. well, good flush there from pdd title over in there as well but cataclysm over the top is going to pick up the kill there for Cassin. the box activated there on the edge of the ties he gets obliterated and spray and praise coming over kid he's trying to make up for lost time xiao xiao very low there but not quite enough they blade of the ruin king pop there for kid as well and he's looking to go when he ambushes forward a little bit of extra movement speed but he's so but the turret gets in range there for expunge and cleans up thresh and some nice counterplay there from Kid. Actually a two for two trade even there as Shasha managed to escape with very, very little health. And IG, they're going to be happy to take this turret if they can get it. Illusion going to do a bit of the tanking here. Lissandra returning to try and clean it out. Very nice play there from James. Returning to defend the mid turret. Very, very crucial. It seems like the theme of today's day has almost been get kill and get objective after that. You know, it's a, a staple at this point of League of Legends strategy. So denying that mid turret, very key there. Absolutely. And they're able to keep it up, which from an LMQ perspective is massive there. They did lose that skirmish in mid lane. It's illusion here, gonna take out his red buff here. Looks like he's gonna give it to himself, which is not too bad. Tr Twitch, sorry, doesn't really need it. He's got his Blade of the Ruin King peel and that uh, melee, the extra slow on the melee, always nice. And you know, Nocturne, he is gonna be in the front lines, probably just ulting on top of a carry. So he's happy to take that red buff there. Looks like a very aggressive Nocturne build coming out here. Uh, this is the same sort of build that Nintendo X was using uh, towards the end of the uh, NALCS last season, even though it's been enough picking up that Spirit of the Elder Lizard. Really, really strong dueling, but does have that potential to dive into a team fight, get a few autos and maybe a fear off, and then kind of instantly explode. But it is a DPS Nocturne based time. He's paired it up with a Hex Drinker. Yeah, I mean, there's some awesome synergy between Nocturne's passive and Spirit of the Elder Lizard if that works the way I think it does, although I'd have to test that one but certainly Nocturne capable of doing plenty of uh, auto attack damage and proccing that Elder Lizard many many times over with his abilities and Hex Drinker you know kind of a nice middle of the road pick up there as well you certainly don't want to insta explode as Nocturne especially when Cassid on the other team been doing quite so well so I think a smart pick up there from Illusion but just in general kind of going through here it looks like RG are kind of happy with their position but at this point with the game quite close I think the really important thing is you know where the objective is going to go and you can see IG here grouping up for this turret here in mid they are going to be able to take it out here I I don't think even Cassidy is going to, going to be able to stop it here, and no, he cannot. Yeah, and TC Avenger just too far down bottom here trying to farm. They will lose that objective in mid lane. Yep, so it looks like it's a tie. Nope. Thinks about shopping, thinks about it again, decides, yeah, I don't really want to. So they're going to set up for some shenanigans here. 
Copies and they're just missing. Tidal Wave coming through as well. They actually really wanted to pick something up, but Shasha with a misfire there on both those abilities, unfortunately, and no one quite arranged there for that one. The Tiger Shade is ultimate as well with, I believe, the gold card lock, so it could have maybe gone in there as well on Twisted Fate, but as it stands here, I think IG are going to have to kind of back away sheepishly there from that one, because that was botched initiation, unfortunately. Yeah, look, they were trying for the pick there. It didn't come together. And just looking at the items here, no real big item because it is the Abyssal Scepter Rush from Zitai. So against targets that are diving on top of him, he'll actually be quite strong here. As you know, if Kasten gets on top of him and he can get the gold cut out, he'll get a decent damage trade with that magic resistance shred. But it's not an ideal item for Twisted Fate. It's not the Zonias, it's not the Lich Bane, it's not the core items that we usually expect out of a Twisted Fate. No, and Kasten on the other side, it's kind of, you know, he's happy with his quick rod of Aegis. It looks like Zitai going to go in there. I think that's bad news for... Thresh, yes it is there, Thresh, there's Illusion activates his ultimate as well. Nice little combo there as Fisted Fate, it's going to give him enough vision. PDD going to come around there as well, just trying to buy time here as Thresh, as he activates the box, looks for a hook, almost found it onto Xiao Xiao. That would have been highlight reel amazingness if he'd landed that hook. He may have been able to escape, but as it was, Nami not quite in range there for that one. And I have to say, IG, you know, they'll be happy to get a kill, but that was a lot of ultimates to kill one support. And it doesn't look like they'll be able to translate it into an objective. In fact, they might actually be like, losing a lot of damage to top turret. But Dream's going to back off here just because he's a bit concerned about the lack of map vision for Onkyo. Yeah, IG going to three man the bottom line now as well. We've got Jarvan in here, Tristana rotating down as well. So probably going to be able to defend off this turret. I guess, unlike uh, unlike Tristana, Twitch's long range, in fact, longest range in the game, is very conditional, where, of course, Tristana will get extra range every single level until the max. So, Avenger, I mean, we talked about Siege last game with Twitch. Uh, you know, he can get some, he can get the job on every now and then, but talking about Siege champions, Tristana's pretty good at pushing turrets come late game. On well, 90% attack speed buff, you know, the 703 range, and they even have Lissandra, who at 550, you know, can combo and do some turret damage as well. So yeah, their sieging is in quite a damn good spot, is that one, Q? They're just going to try and push back here, maintain a little bit more map control. That's kind of the theme of a lot of closer games, is teams are really jostling for position, and that's really what's at a premium here at this point. You can see the turrets are even, the kills are actually even. I think a couple of dragons for IG are tipping, t tipping the gold bounce a little more in their favor, but, you know, a thousand-ish, yeah, exactly a thousand gold. Oh, I guess my math is awful, as always. Just under 2,000 gold there for IG. Is it a nice little advantage here, but it's nothing to write home about here at this point in the LMQ. They're going to look for a spot in Sora IG, and it's just this point, Papa, we're approaching the 20 minute mark here as we've ticked about a quarter of the way through the 19th minute of this game. What do you think of next if you're a team in this spot? I'm looking at both team comps, and we have double AP coming from both sides. Super interesting to see the locket rush on. Jarvan here, and Jarvan's CS is just so low pitch. I just noticed 43 CS compared to Illusion has been farming up a storm here at 104 CS. He's going for the early locket, which is a strong pick against, you know, AD obviously with the armor, but it's a strong pick against burst damage. Not that much burst coming out from Invictus Gaming. I mean, I guess he can mitigate some of the AoE that Ryze will be dishing out and maybe some wild cards, some spray and pray. I mean, it definitely makes sense. It's a good cost-efficient item that does something against this team. But it's but... not the bulwark that he kind of wishes he had. That's a good point, actually. <laughs> Certainly no bulwark is bad news against this double AP team. And it looks like LMQ going to start this dragon here, but IG want to make something of it. Tidal Wave coming through is unlocked and steals it, actually, before the party even starts. And now they're going to go in there. A good Aqua Prison's going to get in there. Rune Prison through as well. Explosions there as Kid picks that up. Now Cataclysm's coming through. Flashes are plenty. Illusion chasing up the back there. Picks up yet another kill. And Kid is just cleaning house right now on this Twitch. Kassadin does get the shot down there onto that... Uh, Nocturne, but a great Aqua Prison again there onto Dream's gonna get it through. The damage is th thick and fast there as Ryze picks up yet another one. And that was very nicely played there for IG and a very cute Baron, uh, Dragon Steel, sorry, for Illusion. Yeah, the only true frontliner in this game is No Name on that Jarvan, but as that sh as you saw there, two levels under the Nocturne, just a casual walk up and steal from Illusion just because of the smite difference in uh, true damage values. So. LMQ, they, they put everything in for the dragon there, lost it and lost the fight that, that uh, followed it up. Yeah, and we often talk about Rumble's ultimate as being something that makes you not want to fight around the dragon area because, you know, kind of closed into a pit and it's kind of bad news. It's, uh, you know, it's in the river, but it's kind of a narrow-ish area and, you t as we said, you tend to group up. Tidal Wave is not quite the equalizer, but it does a pretty good equalizer impression at that spot. 
any long range alliance spells. I mean, Twitch is ultimate, much the same story, pastry time. And that's part of the reason why Nami and Twitch have super synergy. I mean, I already mentioned Tycho's Blessing Spray and Prey is pretty nice. You can get a massive, massive slow, or at least a decent on hit slow at massive range here. It looks like top lane PDD. Gonna go deeper into Avenger, but Dreams is in there as well. The damage coming through with flashes at the end there. And PDD, the classic mistake of flashing when you are dead. Unfortunately, the last auto chases him through. They will get the bottom turret as a result, but uh, that is a dead rise. And they just have to try and pick up a turret here. I mean, the outer turret's still up for Invictus Gaming, so the two of them need to equalize the global gold and take down the turret there after picking up a nice kill. Yeah, Avenger actually kind of busy with the CS. Actually, was at Golems, Javan and Lissandra. He kind of wished Tristana was here a little earlier. The creep wave coming through now, so they may be able to pick this up, and no real rotation from IG is going to mean that this turret will fall. So the bottom turret falls there for IG. LMQ answer back with the top turret now, and now all, uh, all six outer turrets, three apiece here. For both teams have been taken out and again the theme of this being a reasonably close game continues the only difference here is IG seem to be picking up farm where they really need it and those dragons especially because they're actually 4,000 gold ahead right now I mean the team fight for LMQ is all about the Lissandra and Jarvan diving in Jarvan oh, as we Chris. noted really low on gold and Sandra needs that Zonia space to time for the five seconds of untargeted ability. Yeah, I mean, has Chalice, has double Dorans, has almost got the Zonias, in fact, may have enough gold for it at this point. Cassidan building up towards a rabbit on tier, so very much going for damage here after that Rod of Ages, which is uh, always good to see. Rise, I mean, he's got his build going as well. He's got his uh, Archangel stuff. It's not Seraph's Erase, that's the upgrade one. He's got his mm -hmm. Archangel, he's got his Rod of Ages, so he's good to go on, you know, kind of damage items, you know, Rise. Most of his damage comes from mana. Both these items give a lot of mana, so he's happy with where that's going. I like this switch from Illusion, by the way. He's actually gone into Bulwark, or into Aegis, and then uh, eventually Bulwark with his build instead of continuing to go aggressive here. And Twitch as well with Last Whisper. Oh, Pickaxe, sorry. Building up towards that Last Whisper as well. And Rabadon's now complete for Cassidy, means we could see some fireworks around the Baron Pit. Interesting to see that... Avenger here skipped over any sort of critical chance or more AD and gone just straight for a last whisper. So he's going to be trading a lot on his uh, rapid fire Q. When the Q steroid is up, he'll be doing definitely strong damage with the armor penetration and the play the Ruin King passive. But when that's down, he will be struggling a little bit for damage here. Yeah. Has the added benefit of Jarvan's Demacian standard ha helping mm -hmm. him out there as well, but you're absolutely right. Those are both temporary steroids there for Tristana, and Avenger, unfortunately, unlike some other ideas, you know, rapid fire happens, it happens in a big way, and then it never happens again for a, a, quite a long time. You know, it's not like quick draw from graves that you can reset. So, you know, the uptime on that spell, not all that high, unfortunately, a fairly long cooldown, as I said, and interesting to me. I guess it almost feels like Avenger just wants to, you know, knows that she's going to be killing priority targets, you know, whoever jumps in is going to get shredded, because, you know, even someone very tanky like Nocturne at this point, who, to be perfectly honest, isn't even going full tank, is going to get melted by those two Tristana items. But you look down the list, there's no armor pickups whatsoever on the Invictus gaming side, and Last Whisper, even if you have small armor values, is a, is a good pickup, and it's of course a future-proof pickup in that you'll need it at some point in your build, but I just don't understand why uh, Avengers, you know, skipped over, you know, either a Phantom Dancer or, I mean, the BF Sword that she's now picked up. It just because she was so far ahead with that Blade of the Ruin King, the five kills early. It almost feels like a stopgap, but here we see Illusion coming in. Yeah, Illusion actually, uh, I don't think you enjoyed that one too much. You kind of went no. in and then it was all sorts of awkward, unfortunately. So, you know, Illusion, <laughs> he thought about it, but unfortunately when you close a big gap, your team kind of always be there for you and everybody just kind of walked away. So he thrust throughout the lantern, but... James was able to walk away. They didn't need to use the ultimate, didn't need to use the Zonias that's now picked up, but this could be bad news. Aqua Prison going to miss out onto Thresh. Tidal Wave not pop there either, so IG. You know, they're an ult down. It's Illusion's ult. Probably the least effective there. Peter is going to use his as well. Looks like Tidal Wave going to come through now. The Cataclysm comes up, but Avenger with so much damage blows up PDD instantly there as Kid fires back by killing Thresh. But just honestly going through there. Dreams gets stunned up in there as well. Cassidy through the back, picks up a kill onto TF, but actually dies to the Ignite there as the Tide's going to clean that one up. Now Avenger going through in there as well. Shao Shao's coming in. Just honest, still picking up kills. There's Twitch going down, but a dead Trist there as Nocturne picks that one up. And it's clean up City right now for Illusion. Flashes after Dreams. Going to look for it there. A good snare there as well coming out from Lissandra. A good zone is there as well, but Illusion's going to get to kill someone. There's one. He may even get a second one as he chases through Jarvan. There's the fear and so many kills there for Illusion. Four for four. Actually, no. Four for five, sorry, as the dust settles as Thresh respawns himself there. I think Illusion's happy to play cleanup there, but that was a very odd team fight.
yeah, it was just a double dive case. It was very hard to keep track of all the action, but the damage items on Nocturne actually came up trumps there at the end of the fight. Low mana and low, and, and cooldowns uh, in effect for both LMQ champions and Nocturne reigns supreme. Yeah, I think eventually there, I mean, one, you can just see how much damage that build does. That was obscene how quickly PDD got exploded. And interestingly enough, Trist actually going for even more attack damage here once Infinity Edge next is not interested in too much extra attack speed. I mean, to be fair, Bird of the Ruin King kind of puts you at a happy medium for attack speed. And I guess at this point, if you can just go I eating, it's going to be doing silly damage. So I do like where Event is going with this build. But, I mean, Trist did a lot of damage there to Rise. When this crit comes through and that Infinity Edge is built, Anyone is getting melted by this Tristana, pretty much. Absolutely. Those those three items are the core of the Avenger build coming out here. I mean, I personally would have preferred to see the Infinity Edge come out first, just because of the low armor values, but you can't argue with damage. No, and there's going to be plenty of it there for Trist. You saw poor PDD getting killed. I mean, as I said, even Nocturne, who's not too tanky there, they pick up Dragon, and Illusion's got himself a Giant Spot, and the Bulwark now finished up as well, so that's nice for him. But, I mean, even then, he's going to get melted. And the reason I actually like this from Avenger, because, you know, you're kind of expecting to have, you know, maybe eight seconds or however long rapid fire is of just super ridiculous steroids, I kill everyone in four seconds sort of time. And then Cassidy can come in and play cleanup. And Lissandra can maybe reset you as well. There it looks like Shasha going to get Dover and hit Flay back in there as well. And I think went for the tidal wave, but didn't quite get it through. That illusion over the top's getting into the tie. Once in there as well. Looks like No Name is actually getting pinced here. But Avenger's going to come through there. No thinks about, thinks better of jumping over there as PDD picks up the kill and a one for one trade there probably an advantage here for IG who's going to move down towards the bottom tower and try and pick this one up he'll take a jungler for a sport any day of the week they certainly will. They're going to take this tower in there as well. Maybe look for more Rune Prison again. They're onto Thresh. Instant damage there as the box comes out to tie. Finds the stun onto Dreams, and that's bad news there. Avenger picks up Nocturne for it, but it's not quite enough there as Illusion's going to fall. PDD again with the Rune Prison just getting in there, but looks like a great stun there on the Kassadin. So much damage coming through for Twitch. That is going to be enough. Expunge, maybe Deadly Venom? It is enough there as Kid picks it up. Not an Expunge range there for that one. Avenger runs back towards the base. Home guard popped in there as well for Trist, so she'll run back, but IG, I mean, thankfully for LMQ, there's no more objectives going to be taken there for IG, but that was a lot of really nice kills there that IG are happy to pick up. And Zhao Wei Zhao, two fights in a row, has just really struggled to get the cleanup going. He's getting super punished every time he riff walks in. That Zonya's pick up, I mean, he has the Seeker's Arm Guard right now. I feel like the Zonya's are going to be super necessary for him to facilitate those long drawn out team fights that Cassidy really shines in. Yeah, and then there'll be a lot of very creative stuff that LMQ can do with their comp. You know, they've got two Zonias effectively on Dreams there. Lysandra's ultimate can protect herself, and of course she has the Zonias of her own. And once Cassidy can get in there and refork aggressively, you know, you mentioned, we might talk about Twisted Fate, we took talk about Messiah in China, right? He is the Twisted Fate player, or certainly the person who sure. kind of made it famous here. It looks like Prison gonna come out here. That's bad news for Thrash again, getting caught out there as Kid's gonna pick up that kill. But as I was saying, you know, uh, Messiah famous almost for rushing at Zonia's very, very fast on Twist of Fate and then baiting people in by, you know, gating in with Destiny and then just kind of Zonia's in the middle of a team fight. You can get a very similar effect with Kassadin as well. So I like that LMQ Gino has lots of different options with their double AP. Well, Tido is going to come in now as well. Knockup's coming thick and fast. Look at the Iron Solari activated there as Kid's trying to do the damage to his spray and prey, but it's not quite enough to Illusion. Maybe going to look to chase things up. Does pick it up there onto Jarvan, actually. So the ultimate is there for that one, but he's kind of trapped in the wrong place now. Going to get himself picked up here. The Hex Drinker, not enough there to save him there from that one. So a two-for-one trade there as Illusion dies for Thresh, and at no name as Jarvan falls in there as well. But IG going to push through the mid, pick up that middle inhibitor turret, and Papa Smithy, what do we have here? Because IG, it seems somehow, have put themselves in a very nice position in this game. I mean, the itemizing is so interesting here because until just now, until we see the the armor pickups on both Rise and Nocturne, they just itemized fully for magic resist, almost to wade through the Dreams and Zhao Wei Zhao double AP here and, and survive. And it's it's paid off for them. Even though this Shana was insanely fed in the early game, she hasn't been able to be the turntable in these team fights. And they're just being able to, to win team fight after team fight, and now they're taking key objectives out of it, just gaming. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily that Avengers misplaying, but I do seem to be using their CC very, very intelligently. I mean, we saw PDD in the last little extent down towards the bottom, just room prison three people in a row, and, you know, that's an instant cast snare that lasts for quite a while. It, it's 
very hard to get away from a rise if he's in your face, and IG generally have a very good team at doing that, you know. You can't really stop Nocturne coming in, Tidal Wave coming in, and then Zatai ulting on top of your carry and stunning him with Gold Card. Like, it's really, really hard for LMQ to get IG off them, and even though they've got a Fetra Stunner, I think the double AP isn't making up enough for that damage. And Avenger, despite the rocket jump, despite the long way, just can't get away here. And PDD, he's going to be in trouble. They're getting cased up in there as well. But Tidal Wave's going to come through as well. He's actually alive for a very long time, but the hooks they're going to come through for Thresh. He's going to box it up there. Illusion gets knocked out of the way there as they kind of reset the fight, but everybody's going to get in there. Shash is going to look to go aggressive to tie. Very, very aggressively goes in and gets a double kill for his trouble. Kids chasing up now as well. A triple actually there for Twisted Fate. And my goodness, that was that's an instant replay moment if there ever was one. So Ty just made a heroic teleport there in the middle of that team fight. And PD just lived forever, Page Time. You remarked on it there. He just lived for so long, just because Rise. I mean, if we compare the two APs here, Page Time, there's almost no contest. This Rise is so tanky, but doing so much damage compared to just a Zonya's available on Dreams. Dreams has five seconds of untarget ability, but it feels like PDD's living longer being focused during five seconds. Yeah, I mean, you can see the Glacial Shroud, you can see the Rod of Ages, of course, the Seraph's Embrace, and last but not least, the Spirit of Azatur is Illusion. Actually gonna go down here as Kasten picks it one up, but IG, wanna go for the win here, LMQ gonna try and stop them, kid! Gonna get himself out of the way there as the Nami passive giving him a little bit of extra speed there. Shasha coming in there but gets flayed back. A great Aqua Prison though coming through as well. A good juke there as well out from the EQ combo. But the Sandra's now coming up as well. Locker there popped actually as well. I think it may have been a bit of a fat finger but Avenger gets the kill there with Rocket Jump as he comes in and resets his way back over the wall. And finally Nami goes down but Kid's able to get out with his life there protecting his killing spree. And I mean IG they've somehow just carved out a very nice advantage with strong fight after strong fight. I don't know if LMQ have the answer here. Well, I mean, they have the naked Nexus at this point. Oh, the Camping time. Thresh. Goodbye, my friend. That was very mean. Yeah, they thought about the Counter Baron, but quickly uh, changed their mind on that one. Yep, and as you said, the Nexus is naked. Oh my goodness, I see PDD. He's going for it. He wants to go in. Zatai's coming through as well. Can he leave through enough? Cataclysm coming in. No, not this time. Zatai's looking for the Peke, but he's not going to get there. Instantly shut down there for that one. And that was a little hasty there from Invictus Gaming, but I guess they were trying to end the game with style. A good, just good knowledge from LMQ to be in position there. I mean, if they had been reactive to the Twist of Fatal, they wouldn't have been able to get back in time. But clearly they were proactive. They saw the threat of the rise, got the double kill out there. I mean, a naked throne is just so hard to protect, even though they have inhibitor turrets up down top and bot, just because of the Twisted Fate global here. It's hard to see how LMQ will ever be able to get back in the game just because they can't even leave their base, even if their inhibitor responds because of that global pressure. Well, if they can ever engineer a fight, Avenger's going to be doing stupid amounts of damage. I mean, he's all the damage items right now for Tristana. You know, we, we mentioned the Infinity Edge to get picked up. That's been finished. Now Phantom Dancer has been added on top of that as well. So, you know, all damage all the time right now for Tristana. Not interested in defensive items at this moment in time. Whereas you can see, of course, Kid does have himself a QSS. But if LMQ, if there was ever a time where their team fight would look really, really good, I think it's right now with a four damage item, Trist. It's just the Lissandra pastry time. Just not being able to ride anywhere near the team fight impact that PDD has. I, just, I don't mean to harp on, but being untargetable for five seconds is such a powerful thing for a frontline AP champion like Asandra. But I mean, this Rise, he's happy to be targetable because he's not dying anytime soon. Yeah, and this Spirit Visage, I think, for me, is really the key to the to the popularity of Rise again as a, as a viable champion. It just it does so much for him. It's synergized with the, the spell lamp he gets off his ultimate. And just generally, you want to build Rise tanky. Spirit Visage is an item that really just fits very very well there. Looks like IG actually onto Baron there trying to make something happen but LMQ of course well aware of that want to make sure that that doesn't happen. I mean even on the other side you know I mean Kassad I, I guess both Twisted Fate and Kassad are doing quite well in fact they almost finished Baron what is going on here LMQ they need to go in if they can Illusion actually activates Ultimate Jarvan coming through there maybe looking for the seal they're going in the Tidal Wave comes in there as well I think they want to try and clean it up there's a good smite from Nocturne as he picks it up and as long as they're coming through his dreams gets in there but everybody else is kind of alive a kid actually no encased up there the rest of his team not quite around there enough but it doesn't matter oh Twisted Fate Surprise the tie, and as you said it, Papa, don't leave your base, LMQ. Don't do it, and look what happens. And that's the uh, that's the reality of global space. Your time, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. They went for the Baron's stop just because they knew Baron would be something they couldn't fight against, and Zatai had his way, and the game was over. That was almost 
I think that was an impossible situation for LMQ. That was, you know, maybe a little anticlimactic there, but, uh, you know, second time's a charm there for Zatai with the Peke and does manage to pick up the Nexus there. And as you said, Papa, just unfortunately for LMQ, no way to leave their base. And if they give up Baron, then with the the fact they were already quite behind, I don't know if there's much left they can do there. So that's their, <laughs> that's our third game of the day. The fourth game will be, of course, over on the YouTube.com slash Series site. So make sure to catch it and all the rest of our games from our week three day one coverage. We'll be back here, Tencent LPL Summer coverage, still continuing on.